Okay, so thank you very much all for joining us today for part two of our special episode of In a Zoom uh, Car with IPR. And we have three wonderful guests today, Brandy Boatner of IBM, Iman Jefferson now of Nextdoor, and Christina Lucky of BCW Global. Thanks for being here, ladies. It's great to see you again. Thank great you. Excited to be back with the group. I know. I this group. Great. So why don't we start off? This is an interesting episode because we've done two parts. So here we are in second part filmed a month and a half later, and you get a chance to sort of reflect on that, what I wish I would have said or what I wish I would have added. So maybe we'll take just a second and go to each of you and say, is there anything that you wanted to say that maybe you didn't get to say in the first episode that won't be covered? So Christina, why don't we start with you? I don't know if I would say what I wish I would have said. I think what's interesting is in the last week, I reached out to you after the after the highly, uh, you know, global, highly talked about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, uh, interview with Oprah. And I said that I found that triggering. And I think, you know, barring from the previous topic, you know, the reason why I did find it triggering is it was so relatable to so many diverse women in terms of having to, even after you tell your story, having it questioned and pulled apart and, and, you know, this kind of legitimized. And, and I think that, you know, we, I can speak to the fact that I've certainly been in situations where barriers weren't broken down, blind spots weren't, you know, if they were detected, you know, it was basically just, yes, I had to deal with that. And I think, you know, so there are just so many parallels to hearing that story and it was so relatable. And so the only thing I would say is, again, as we think of, you know, allies, accomplices, advancing diversity, inclusion and equity, you know, breaking down and eliminating bias. These are roles that companies need to take, you know, and actions companies need to take very seriously. What about you, Brandy? Yeah, I'm with Christina. I don't think there's anything I wish, you know, that I could have said. I just think it's interesting a month and a half later, um, we did talk about the Harry and Meghan, but I would say just even more recently, two days ago, yes, we all know I love Beyonce. I am a, a I am a like a like a loyal member of the beehive. But the fact that on Sunday she made history as the uh, performer, either male or female, with the most Grammys in history just made me feel amazing and seeing her share the stage with Megan the Stallion who I just love her she's just unapologetically herself but to see such black girl magic um, at the award show that had had some really serious criticism for not labeling the right you know artists in a category and just a lot of they've had issues with diversity that's not a surprise but to see those two share the stage to see the first black country singer sing a song black like me, which was amazing. Even though I love Maren Morris too, but oh my God, Mickey Guyton was so good. It just, it, it was just so validating and refreshing that just a month prior we had this conversation and the very things that we've been talking about, like Christina said, from allies to accomplices to, you know, actions, tangible actions that you take, it just was, it was really, reaffirming and refreshing to see that on Sunday. And of course, I'm happy for the queen. I already tweeted and told everybody bow down because she's the greatest, you know, artist of all time. So. Fantastic. I do love Beyonce too. Me but too. Who, but who, who doesn't? <laughs> Nor should they admit if they don't because that exactly. would be good for them. Sacrilegious or something. Yeah. What about you, Iman? No, I mean, I'm just to say, you know, right after we recorded it, McKinsey released their race in the workplace report, which again, kind of underscores everything we talked about when it comes to this disconnect with black employees in the workplace and not having allies and sponsors and you know things that we talked about before. So one, I'd recommend everyone to read that report because it offers a lot of nuggets that we talked about. But then again, it's to push these companies to make sure they really do have the right people and practices in place to make sure that people are having the right opportunities. Yeah, that was a great report. It was about black employees in the private sector. And some of the data that they showed was that it would take a hundred years yeah. for black people to achieve parity in the workplace. But if people took action now and did what they should, it would take 25 years. 
Right. And you just think how significant 25 years is, let alone to think about the 100. That's someone's entire career, right? Exactly. So or even an entire lifetime, right? Than what they are. Yep. Right, exactly. Yes. So we've all experienced tremendous change in the past year, and it's not over yet, even though I do think that uh, we are seeing some hope with the vaccines. What sort of additional changes and challenges do you see in the next year moving forward for the comms function as it relates to organizations? So Iman, why don't we start with you? For sure. I would say that the biggest thing right now is just making sure that, you know, comms now has become front and center in organizations and counseling, you know, our executives and CEOs on navigating things moving forward. And the reality is what happened last year is going to continue to be the same, whether it's things with COVID and making sure that people really are seeing companies' values and you know transparency come across. And it really is for the communicators and those organizations to make sure that they're pushing and having those conversations and urging them to continue to make sure that that level of accountability and transparency is coming across in their messaging. Yeah, I think transparency is so, I think, critically important um, for organizations. Uh, what about you, Brandy? Um, actually, something, Tina, I think that we talked about a little bit earlier, I think that um, communicators and companies are really going to have to continue to double down on employee communications and the support that they provide employees, because I do think there's going to be some some challenges and some hesitations in a post-pandemic world. Um, I do think there's going to be some PTSD effects, um, whether you're returning to the workplace, um, whether you're, you know, in this hybrid model of, you know, attending an event or doing anything. I think communicators really need to continue the laser sharp focus that we've had on our employees and the wellness of our employees, which is something, you know, wellness might have, I don't want to say it was cute, not that's not the right, it might have been something that companies, you know, offered like as a side thing, but I think wellness and the the physical and, and mental wellness of employees really is critical, especially going into post pandemic. And I do want to state, and I said this to um, someone earlier today, that when we say the word trauma, people tend to think that a trauma is like a big thing, like a really big event that's happened to you, something that you know, an, a violent attack, abuse. But traumas are actually really little things too that can trigger you. And just the fact that we've been locked down, someone said the other day, the CDC declared the pandemic on March 12th. So it was the paniversary of the pandemic. Okay, we've been in lockdown for a year. That's gotta have lasting effects when we look at how we emerge from this. And so are we as communicators ready? Are we ready to, to do that and to deal with that and to communicate with our employees and with our audiences? Also, we have to be ready. Habits have changed. How people consume things have changed. How people expect things have changed. Are we ready for that? So I do think there's, there's really um, kind of a responsibility and accountability for communications professionals to look at, you know, what does post-pandemic life mean? And how can we enable our clients, our employees, um, you know, our organizations to, you know, to be able to communicate that? Yeah, the post-pandemic is, it's really interesting, even thinking about return to work. And um, we've been seeing, one, some research about like a say-do gap with some leadership where they say, you know, we really care about your mental health and it's very critical, yet I really need you to work this entire weekend and show up right. to the a.m. meeting, right? So I think that's a challenge. Um, what are your thoughts, Christina? Yeah, no, I agree with, uh, you know, with Brandy and, and Mon in terms of transparency, you know, that there is that even when we get through this, we're still talking, you know, I've seen everything from a year to two or the anticipated times, the anticipated time frame that people will finally be able to feel like they're back to normal. But I think, you know, just as brands, we've seen this, they've played a, you know, significant role, frankly, in a central, they have been those essential workers in helping us get through this, you know, and lending their voices, their, you know, their operations, et cetera, to help us get through this pandemic. And so, and as a result, consumers have relied on that. I think, you know, as we look ahead, there's this beautiful opportunity for brands to really focus on their storytelling and their why, and their, you know, continuing to communicate the, the value and the role that they play in people's lives. What are some of the new presidential administration with the Biden-Harris administration? 
Um, how are you seeing this play out in the organization? Um, what are some like considerations and, and changes that you may see, or is it still like full steam ahead of what, what, with what you're doing? Um, Brandy, why don't we start with you? Sure, I'm really glad that um, you asked this question uh, because um, on November 8th, shortly after uh, President Biden was elected, um, my CEO Arvind Krishna sent a letter to the Biden administration um, really outlining what IBM, what we were hoping for from the administration and what, you know, how we could help or work together. Now, IBM has supported every presidential administration, I think since Woodrow Wilson, I think like way, way, way back. So every administration, but Arvin's letter to Biden, he really talked about a couple of key interest areas for us that again, we wanna partner with the administration in working on. Uh, we talked about, he talked about unity and inclusion. He talked about culture. He talked about um, science. You know, we have the whole science is real and just, you know, the, the critical elements of science and how we apply science. He talked about digital infrastructure. Um, he talked about economic opportunity with what we call new collar jobs. Like maybe you don't need a four year degree um, to get a good job. Maybe you can get a good job in STEM and we can close the skills gap, you know, by offering and getting rid of like this, if we rethink the resume, if you will. So we wrote that, our CEO wrote that letter on November 8th. Um, consequently, when the administration came into um, power at the end of July, I mean, at the end of January, um, I mentioned my head of uh, transformation and culture. He wrote a letter to Secretary Cardona, the Secretary of Education and um, the Secretary um, of Labor about skills and education and how we feel that the model that we use um, called Pathways in Technology or PTEC um, can be applied to, um, again, getting those from underrepresented uh, communities access, you know, and exposure to STEM, not only subjects, the field careers to really nurture the talent. And, you know, one of the things, you know, just if you read his letter and just kind of what he says, your zip code should not determine the, the education that you, that you get. It just shouldn't, you shouldn't say you live in a certain area so you can only go to the school you this is the only path for you there's a number of paths so we are all in with the Biden administration um when we pulled out of facial recognition uh last summer uh we sent a letter to congress as to why we pulled out of facial recognition software why we would no longer do that um we are very clear on bias and how we feel about technology and and, and ai and ai bias so it's funny that you asked this question because i'm like I mean, we're like all in, like all, and I'm just like, absolutely, we wanna make sure that we work with this administration to ensure all of, you know, all of these things. And we just feel like we can't be a company producing these technologies and applying this, and then we don't work with it, or we don't offer some, you know, kind of help as it relates to skills or looking at the amazing communications team they have, or we're looking at innovation, or we're looking at anything that, you know, reflects or impacts the American, you know, the general population, the American people. However, we can help with that, we will. So it's it's funny. I bet you didn't know that we had written all those, <laughs> that we had all those letters going to the Biden administration. That's good. I'm sure you will read each and every one. So yes. <laughs> I'm just saying they're all out there. They're all online. They're all really good letters. We tweeted about it. It's really good stuff. That's great. That's great. Christina. Yeah, no, I think, but that speaks just to the partnership. I, I would say if anything, businesses probably feel that they can just focus on the business of the business that there's not as much, you know, what I've seen is that they, you know, they're, they're opening this partnership. They want to work, you know, with the administration, they're looking at what are the issues that the administration is championing, whether we've talked about sustainability, climate change, certainly the different workforces, diversity, inclusion, and they're, and they're marrying up their, you know, priorities and agendas to make sure that they're reflecting that as well. And so there just seems to be, you know, what I'm saying is just more of this open, uh, openness, I think, to, to, let's just chart, a, you know, to, to collectively chart a positive path forward, you know, the volatility, it, putting it behind, and let's just do what we need to do to get, you know, get the country to get the globe like back, back on track. And so it really is this, you know, positive focus, I would say nowadays is what we're seeing.
All right. So I get to ask you some fun questions and it's lightning round. So that means don't spend 10 minutes on each answer pretty much. So uh, I, this is the, I love this because this way I get to know more about you, even though I do know some things about you already. So Iman, we'll start with you. What is your favorite band or music? My favorite, I'm a huge hip hop head. I'm a huge 90s hip hop head. And my favorite band is the Tribe Called Quest. Woo woo, oh, nice. Dr. Is so lit. So lit. Yes. Uh, Brandy, is it Beyonce or do you have another? I, you already answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I just didn't know if you had some other, like, you know. That I mean, I like lots of, I like lots of bands, but my taste, it like varies. I, one day it could be Dermot Kennedy from Ireland. The next day it could be, I've been listening to a lot of White Snake because I've been channeling oh, a lot of White Snake. Oh, I'm here for that. I'm here right? for that. Okay. So like it varies, but like Beyonce is constant. Great. Yeah. David Coverdale with the White Snake. I mean, there. it I like it. I, it really is like an outlet, Tina. Like really I hear you. I've been I channeling. Hear you. Yeah. channeling it's so funny like those 80s i can remember the videos so clearly like right you, you just like were married the hair oh. exactly <laughs> christina what say, about you why are you saying i was listening should i say i'm a closet metallica fan i don't know is that like yes that's you love don't be a closet yeah. metallica fan you'd be an out loud metallica metallica fan. Fan. christina <laughs> I do. I that's love right. metallica too they, who does it? Field. i, I know, mean amazing. come on the and guitar that. action All right, favorite book, uh, Christina. Okay, I can't tell you a specific book, but it is typically anything that involves a vampire, a werewolf, a ghost, some demons. So <laughs> right now I'm reading actually <laughs> um, part of the All Souls trilogy. So I'm on the third book, The Book of Life. So. Oh, I love it. This is great. Yeah. Love it. Iman, what about you? Oh, I love Toni Morrison. Song of Solomon is definitely high up there. Yes, there aren't really any vampires or werewolves or ghosts. No. Morrison, so. <laughs> what about you, Brandy? So honestly, so I am such a hometown girl. So I'm from New Orleans and I had to read this book in middle school and it touched me in such a way because I was like reading about very adult mature situations that I was like oh my god like I think about this stuff too and the name of the book is Night Jasmine by Mary Lou Widmer and she's a local New Orleans artist or, or, or author she only wrote a handful of books but they're all about New Orleans they all take place in New Orleans at different times and I remember reading this like I said in middle school So we'll wind this down, but my last question then would be, what are your favorite movies, shows, podcasts, multiple ones that you would like to tell us what they are? Iman, are you thinking Iman or? Are I am, I was like, and I, so, so I love The Crown, right? But I told myself, like, let me just wait until I, like things get rough in the pandemic and then I can watch the latest season. And I just started The Crown this past season, this past week, which season everything four. that's happened in the news is like, Mm -mm -mm. this is just so telling all over again so that obviously is top of list podcast uh, I love the brilliant idiots that feature Charlemagne the God it's just like guy humor that for some reason I connect with and I think is hilarious and pop culture and all the things um let's see well definitely binging on lots of Netflix shows. I did do Ginny and Georgia. I highly recommend that if you haven't seen it. Yet. I wanted to watch great. it. I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. All around, you know, all around fun, good music, interesting dynamic between the mom and certainly you know, her Gen Z daughter. Um, I also, Tom and Jerry, again, mom, but, you know, it's actually super cute. I highly recommend it. Go <laughs> um, head to the, head to the theaters now. And then, you know, but podcast, I love a good podcast. So let's see, there's a few that I listen to. Um, I like Brene Brown, you know, Dare to Lead. I like, um, there's one by Blake Schofield, uh, Bridge to Fulfillment, just really great stories about women overcoming so much. Uh, I love um, School of Greatness. So that's one that is by a former, a former 
uh, NFL, you know, athlete and just really interesting uh, speakers and just life lessons on leadership and perspectives and, you know, overcoming all sorts of things. So really, just really enlightening. And I, and I have to plug BCW. We just launched our new podcast called In, Inside the War Room. And it just really gives, you know, all the inside backstory on some of the great crises that have been out there. So you guys have to take a listen. Great. What about you, Brandy? I've been seeing, watching a lot of like random Netflix. Um, I am obsessed and don't judge me. You don't know my life, but like I'm obsessed with teen angst. So I love like Riverdale. Like I love like teen shows and I just finished watching Trinkets, fell in love with it. This teen show about shoplifters, girls who shoplift, loved it. And then of course I have not watched yet to all the boys I've loved three I'm, I haven't like seen waiting that one the, I'm waiting for the right moment Christina because I don't want to be interrupted I don't want anybody to like call me text me um I love Peter Kavinsky aka Noah Centennial like I am waiting to sit down and watch the movie um but I, I just love like these teen romance like I love the as the kids would say Tina I love the YA the young adult genre <laughs> um don't judge me like I just I have a very active child brandy that's all I will say it's not like creepy or anything it's just a very active (laughs) um in terms of podcasts I love 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 call your girlfriend (laughs) like I just feel like me and my friends could be doing that podcast because we would probably like call each other after a couple glasses and like just talk like nonsense like I just love that they just it's like me and my friends that's why I really really like that podcast and then um I don't know if you've heard the lazy genius it like Mm -hmm. tells you like random ridiculous things like come on have you ever sat around and wondered who first made pants like (laughs) like like you it's probably in my google search because I'm like like, have you ever like thought about that like and so lazy genius asks like rando stuff but it's it's for people who are you know you might have like a really good idea you might be thinking about all these things but you just you're too lazy to like do something about it or like look it up or just let me just listen to a podcast so I can like learn about like how like thread came to be like the the leader in textile like just like random stuff well, this wraps up our episode of In a Car with IPR. This was a lot of fun. And I appreciate Brandy, Mon, and Christina spending some time with us. Uh, if you like the video, check it out on our YouTube and make sure you watch part one as well. Um, but we're I'm hoping that when this pandemic is over that we can all hang out in person and have some great dinner and drink some great cocktails. So thanks again, you all for being here and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for watching this episode of In a Car with IPR. Want to make a tax deductible contribution to support this series and fund research in the profession? please visit us at instituteforpr.org slash contribute.